In this video, we're going to take a look at a simple overview of Maven. A funny story on this video. A previous version of this video is the most popular video I have on YouTube. I recorded it and it gets about 3,000 views per month. At the time I'm recording this, it's almost at 100,000 lifetime views. The only trick is it uses Eclipse. So I was able to find the original raw video file and I simply updated it by taking out the Eclipse parts and inserting in new IntelliJ IDEA parts, but the rest of the presentation remains the same as the original. First of all, what is MAVEN? It stands for an accumulator of knowledge. We use it frequently, especially in Java-based projects, because it manages our builds, it manages our dependencies and versions of those dependencies, and it provides us with some documentation. So the file that we think of when we think of Maven is pom.xml because that's where all of this is configured. And in this video, I'll show a, a very simple pom and I'll also show one that was generated for us so we can do a little compare and contrast. So another nice thing about Maven is it has really good support with IDEs and we'll take a look at that uh, in this video and some videos that follow. So why Maven? It's a central repository for dependencies. And what do we mean by dependencies? We know we don't want to rewrite everything from scratch anytime we write a program. We want to leverage what is already out there that we can reuse. So many times when we look for a jar file or some other kind of library that we'll include, it will have a little Maven snippet that says, just add this to your Maven POM file. The nice thing then is, all you have to do is right click and do Maven update. It will find the dependency for you and it will include it as part of your final built artifact. So Maven is a universal build system. In Java, we have many choices around how to build our projects. We can use old school Java C if we just want to compile source code into compiled files. We can use Ant, which is XML based. Maven is also XML based. And Gradle is one that we see a lot, especially in Android projects that's more of a JSON format. Ant is very flexible and extendable, where Maven, not so flexible and extendable. But one positive thing that Maven brings to us is this dependency management, which wasn't so easy to do in Ant. So easy to build, and it also makes it easy to pull in new features by simply pulling in their dependencies. Now, before we get into details, let's take an overview look with an animation. And this is one of those things you maybe want to draw it out so you can always refer back to it or take a screen capture of it. But first of all, when we are defining our project, let's say our project is this thing in blue. We give it a group ID, artifact ID, and version, which we'll describe in just a few moments. But suffice it to say, that's essentially a unique identifier of this unit that we're building here. Now what's nice is that this group ID, artifact ID, and version can be used to refer to dependencies that we have when we're building our project. So in other words, we're setting up our compilation unit. We might depend on some libraries. Those libraries, if they are configured through Maven, will be set up in a very similar way. And therefore, in the dependencies section of our POM XML, we simply need to reach out and say the group ID, artifact ID, and version of any dependent libraries, and it's able to go find them. So you see that we label our own unique identifier, and then we can use the unique identifier of other built components to bring them into our application. Now you might say, well, there's kind of a natural progression here. Could somebody else use our group ID, artifact ID, and version to refer to us? And yes, let's say that green is something else that's being built. And the thing that is green uh, has a dependency on our artifact, which is blue. Our artifact has dependency on these orange artifacts that were built by somebody else. So you see, this can be used to set up a dependency tree, or in other words, a dependency matrix. And that's where Maven and these unique identifiers are very handy. So let's explore them in a bit more depth. If we take a look at a POM XML, I'll bring up an example. Here's a look at a POM.XML file. This one I generated with Spring Initializer, but really it could be any POM.XML, doesn't necessarily have to be one for Spring. So a few things that we notice right off the bat. First of all, it is XML, and it is indeed proper XML, that is that any open tag has a closed tag, so on and so forth. We see it has a root element of project, which means that that's the tag that opens and closes this file. So we don't want to have anything outside of that tag except for this informational line up above. Now, the next thing that we see is model version, which is kind of like 
a Maven version. And it's been 4.0.0 for as long as I remember. So this one you pretty much just want to keep as it is. The next thing we see is the parent block. And this says that we are inheriting information from this parent POM. It gives a bit more information there. I'll talk more about that in a few moments. But what I want to jump down to now is this next unit here, which is describing our project. So first of all, we have the group ID, which is the organization that owns the software or is writing the software. And here I have that as com.myplantdiary or myplantdiary.com, put in reverse. Next, we have the artifact ID. Now this artifact ID is important because this is going to be part of the file name of the compiled file that's generated. So remember that Maven is a build tool, which means that we're building things. And when we build something, we're typically going to end up with an artifact or a built thing. And these actually both artifact ID and version are both important because they're describing what we're building. So artifact ID is enterprise. And then the version 001 is kind of like the very first version. And then dash snapshot indicates that this is a work in progress. So it is not a final or a release version where other places in the POM, you'll see uh, dependencies marked with release. Here, this says we're currently running this. So I went ahead and built it and let's take a look at what generated. You see enterprise dash 001 dash snapshot dot jar. So if we take a look here, enterprise 001 snapshot, and where'd the jar come from? Well, the jar is assumed, but if you wanted to give it a different extension, you just put an element here for packaging, and then you could put in something like war if you wanted to create a war file, but we'll go ahead and leave it at the default. The name and the description, that's just a bit of documentation. So I just described it, but here it all is in the slide if that makes it a little bit easier to uh, make some notes on that. Model version, we stick with that. Uh, group ID, who owns the project. Artifact ID, name of the compilation unit. Version 001 snapshot. Packaging, and then description. So that is essentially describing this blue box here. Now one note is that these POM files can get rather large, and in object-oriented programming we know the concept of inheritance. So it is possible to say, okay, give me everything from this other POM and then let me override any values that I want to override locally. So you see that object-oriented metaphor plays really well into this concept of Maven. In that case, we're going to need a parent. And in the parent, we're going to say, okay, this is the POM file I want to inherit from. And I'm going to inherit everything except for the artifact ID, the name, and any prerequisites. So here's a look at the parent element and the pom.xml that we're investigating. So we know that what this means is there is a pom.xml that can be referred to with all of this information here. And we're saying that we want to inherit all the information from that pom.xml and anything we want to override will override in this local file or anything we want to append like any new dependencies, we will do so in this local file. So you see it has a group ID, just like we have a group ID for our artifact. It has an artifact ID and a version, just like we have an artifact ID and a version. So we can use the same pattern of identifying attributes to go out and find a parent POM. Now, if you're curious, how did I know that was the parent POM information? Well, when I started this project, I started it using Spring Initializer right here, and this walks me through a little wizard where it says, hey, what dependencies do I want to add, so on and so forth. And that's what created this POM, so it already knew that. As a matter of fact, if you take a look here, you can see the version, the name, the description, the group ID, the artifact ID, and everything else. That's what went into creating this initial POM file when I initially created this project. So I had a bit of a helper. Now, to do a, a demonstration, I wanted to show what it would also look like if we didn't start with a wizard like that. So I started a new project, also in IntelliJ IDEA, but this time instead of choosing Spring Initializer, I just chose plain old Maven and left it at absolute defaults and didn't put anything in it. So as you can see here, we have the model version, the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version for our project, but I don't have all that parent POM information because this is the absolute most basic POM XML I could have. 
Either approach works, it just depends on what you want to do. Do you want to start with a template or a bootstrap of a project, which already has a lot of the plumbing built in for you? Or do you want to start your own project and do your own build from scratch? Both ways are fine, both ways are Maven based. Dependencies, no major surprise here. The collection of things that we're dependent on, like the Spring Framework Library, or, or maybe some JUnit libraries, prime faces, anything else that we might have a dependency on. And you can probably figure out what's going to happen here. We're going to need to specify at least a group ID and artifact ID, probably a good idea to specify version as well, but not always required. So for dependency, we're just saying we want these orange things that we're dependent on. As we are getting more and more mature in application development, there are more and more libraries that will make our job easier. A lot of times an effective programmer will first look for libraries that already exist before building something from scratch. And this is where Maven can be very helpful. So we take a look at our uh, dependencies and we see version, group ID, and artifact. And now we can go back to our pom.xml file and we take a look at a very important section here. First of all, note the plural tag dependencies, which has a bunch of children, which are singular dependency. So when you're adding a dependency, make sure to add it within this dependencies element. Dependency management is where Maven really shines. Many times our software development can be a lot easier if we find things that are already built instead of recreating them from scratch. So we simply add a dependency to this POM XML, and then we do an update, and the dependency is automatically downloaded for us. As a matter of fact, most modern IDEs will handle that process for us automatically. Now, how did these dependencies get here? The ones you're seeing got here simply because I went through the spring initializer and I picked a few things I knew I was going to need. And what that did is simply create those dependency sections in the POM XML. But it is a normal old XML file, so we could easily go find some libraries out on the internet. And more often than not, those libraries will contain a little nugget that tells you how to add them as a dependency into your POM file. And if that's the case, just copy and paste that dependency put it here in the proper place in the dependencies section, and you'll have access to that library. Now, where do the libraries go? Well, they tend to go into an M2 directory on your hard drive on your local computer. So we'll see here M2 and then repository. Let's take a look at one of our dependencies. We'll look at the group ID MySQL, artifact ID, MySQL connector Java. So MySQL is a database that we can use, and a driver is how we talk from essentially native Java code into that database. So let's see, it started with a group ID of MySQL, and then an artifact ID of MySQL connector Java. And then we go in there, we see a version, and sure enough, we see MySQL connector Java 8.0.2.1.jar. So this is all the stuff that we need to talk from our application to the MySQL database. And you'll see that that pattern repeats if you look at any of our other dependencies, org.springframework.boot, and we can come back over here and we can look at org, and we can follow the trail to spring framework, and then, dot, and then boot. And then all the Spring Boot dependencies are here. So you might notice that this M2 directory is fairly large. And one thing that's interesting is this is a central directory for any Maven-based project on your computer. So it is one central library for all of those. So uh, the, both of the projects that I created, the Spring Boot project and the Simple project, are going to use that same library to deposit their archives. Now, they're only going to read the archives that they require, and they know what they require because they're specified in this dependency section. But nonetheless, they're going to deposit them into the same place. And if you have multiple projects with multiple similar dependencies, that can save a little bit of space because you only need to save it one time. Now, one other thought, though, how did that get so big? Because both of my POM XMLs look relatively small. If we take a look at the one for Spring Boot, it's only about 58 lines long. If we take a look at just the plain vanilla POM XML, it's 12 lines, and several of those lines are simply white space. But remember that we inherit certain things via this parent element here. Well, one of the things that our IDE can do for us, which is quite handy, is you can go to the POM, 
you can right click on Maven and then you can choose show effective palm. Now this looks like a file but it's not really a file you can append. What it's done is it's taken the parent palm and everything we're inheriting from that and then it takes all of our overrides from our local files in anything that we've appended and it puts it all into one big file that makes it really easy to take a look at the different dependencies that your entire application needs. If we look at this effective POM that was generated for my Spring Boot project, we see it is over 6,000 lines long. Now let's do the same thing for this very basic project with no parent and no dependencies. I simply right click once again, Maven, show effective POM, and we will see that this one is bigger than the original file, but it's only 250 lines, where the one for our Spring Boot project is over 6,000 lines, but we also know our Spring Boot project has the parent and has several dependencies as well. One other thing that we'll see in the Spring Boot project that we don't see in the basic POM XML project is this Build Plugins section. These are for anything that we need to help us with our build. So we see that Spring Boot required something extra where just normal old POM uh, did not require anything extra. So that's a compare and contrast of two different POM files. One with some information that was added there for us and another that was very much blank. Now let's remember that Maven is a build tool. So I wanna show you one other handy window here in IntelliJ. First of all, this is what was built before. I'm going to go ahead and take these two and delete them. And I'm going to go to the Maven window over here. And here you'll see most of the Maven tasks that we'll regularly use. Reload all Maven projects. Let's say that you made a change to a POM or maybe you had something go wrong in the M2 directory and you need to re-download a file. Hit that. Then we have generate sources and update folders and download sources and or documentation. One other nice thing about Maven is that when you download a library, you can optionally grab sources and documentation as well, which helps you to debug through that, especially classes that you don't own. So those two are helpful there. Add Maven projects, add a new Maven project. Execute Maven goal. This one's fairly important. I also want to show toggle skip test mode as well. When we say execute Maven goal, that typically means we're going to do something like build. Baked into that, it will also run any tests automatically, which is a good idea. But let's say that we're working on an intermediate build. Maybe we're just in the middle of something we want to try out and we want to save the time of running all those tests. We can temporarily toggle off the test here and then do our build. That'll just save a bit of build time if you're doing rapid compiling and the like. And then, of course, you want to run the test before you do an official commit, merge, all of that stuff. Nonetheless, I've deleted our target executable, and I'm going to go ahead and rerun it again. Uh, I'll go ahead and toggle off tests. I don't have any tests right now anyway, but just to show it, I'll toggle it off. Then I'm going to hit Execute Maven Build, and we'll see Maven Install. And what that means is essentially clean everything out and then just build from scratch and create a deployable. So I hit Maven install. Let's let this run for just a moment. We got build success. Let's go back and take a look at our target directory. And sure enough, there's our final built component, enterprise-001-snapshot.jar. And if we take a look at our parent information, enterprise-001-snapshot, that shouldn't be any surprise. So that's an overview of Maven. I was hoping to do this video in about five to 10 minutes, but you see we got uh, into a bit more information, got a bit longer. Nonetheless, Maven is something that we are going to use going forward. So we'll get a lot of time to play around with these dependencies, do Maven updates and try it out. I'm curious for your thoughts. Uh, let me know what they are in the comments section. Thank you.